In the meantime, it is 2030 hours Frankfurt local time. We have 2,500 kilometers of the route behind us, and already we are far into Russian airspace. Gerade überfliegen wir die nördliche Dwina, ein Fluss, der bei einem Blick aus dem Cockpitfenster gut zu erkennen ist. At the moment we are flying over the Dwina, a river that is easily recognizable from the cockpit window. We are now flying over thinly populated territory, with few radio beacon stations, and so navigation is mainly based on the INS, Inertial Navigation System, which we want to tell you about later. The airspeed indicator is showing Mach 0.82. With a prevailing 40 knot tailwind, that's giving a true airspeed of 474 knots and a ground speed of a good 950 kilometers per hour. We're currently flying at 11,000 meters. Here in Russian airspace, the flight controllers give the height in meters. The cockpit crew's main task at the moment is to give out regular announcements of position, to navigate and to monitor the aeroplane systems, in particular the autopilot. Meanwhile, passengers enjoy the comfort which the spacious DC-10 is always given. This early promotional film was regularly used by Lufthansa. Here it shows how Lufthansa fitted out the aircraft interiors, with an emphasis on the final result. A flight in a DC-10 is also pleasant for passengers because it flies comparatively smoothly even when there is turbulence on account of its relatively high wing loading. The cockpit crews were also bound to regret it when the last DC-10 left Lufthansa at the end of November 1994. When it was introduced it included many technical innovations. This early film emphasized things that we take for granted today, such as passenger comfort and facilities. Technical innovations are also explained, for example, modern landing systems and engine reliability.
Unfortunately, the DC-10 fell into disrepute for some time on account of some spectacular accidents, a reaction which was promoted by the media, but not really shared by the experts. During the 20 years that the DC-10 has been in operation with the world's airlines, it has proved itself to be an extraordinarily reliable aeroplane. I haven't ever experienced a really serious problem such as an engine failure. Well, this is partly because the engines are very reliable. Some of them stay up to 20,000 hours under the wing before they're then replaced as a precaution. The last problem I can remember was about one and a half years ago, and then one of the bleed valves wouldn't open. That meant air couldn't be drawn from one of the engines for supplying an air conditioning unit. However, as we have three of these units and we're able to connect them to each other, there was no problem in completing the flight and no reduction in passenger comfort. But what do you do if the system is indicated as faulty? I can demonstrate that best by a small example. I just take the third generator from the bus. Now, as you can see, a warning light has come on, the generator three off light. Additionally, the previously mentioned master caution warning has come on. We then refer to the abnormal procedure booklet. 